Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to learn how to draw some marble textures. And this video is part of a digital art course that I designed as a month-long YouTube series, so it is totally free. And you can definitely choose to only watch this one specific video if all you care about is how to draw marble. But you can take on the challenge of improving our art skills by drawing along with the community every day. And if you want to do that, make sure to check out my website where the full schedule for the entire challenge is going to be. And also make sure to subscribe as well as ring the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming textures that are going to be part of this course. So all you need for this tutorial is some sort of a digital art software and I will be using Procreate on the iPad Pro. But you can definitely use pretty much anything that has layers in it. So Photoshop, Corel Painter, Krita, Affinity Designer. Honestly, most mainstream and not even like that mainstream <laughs> digital art software uh, will do for this tutorial. I will be suggesting just really basic digital art brushes. So basically the one that come with your software, they're definitely going to work. And I will also include a free color palette in the description below, but otherwise you can pick your own colors if that's more what you're into. And if you are watching this video in uh, the course, you also need to set aside, I would say, 10 to 25 minutes to really practice your marble texture, depending on whether you are on day 8 or day 9 of the course. And with that being said, let's start drawing. So go ahead and start by creating a new canvas and for this project the dimensions don't really matter since we're just practicing. Um, I recommend higher than 2000 per 2000 just so you can actually see what you're doing without getting too many um, pixels in a way. But honestly other than that doesn't matter that much. So if you have the color palette make sure that it is handy so in Procreate you can just set it as default. And we're going to start by changing the color of the background. So when you practice texture, I really recommend that you use a uh, neutral color. So a gray color. You don't want pure white or pure black. So some of the grays that are on the right of the pot, perfect choice. For marble, I'm going with either the middle one or the dark one. That would be my suggestion. And once that is done, we're going to just create a bunch of layers all at once so that it's behind us and we can just focus on drawing later. So start by creating one layer that is going to be renamed Drop Shadow. Then you're going to create the most important layer, which is the base. So a new layer on top of the Drop Shadow, rename it to Base, and just leave it as is. On top of this base layer, go ahead and create another layer, set it as a clipping mask. And what a clipping mask does is basically everything you draw on this new layer is going to stay within the shape of the base layer. So that's really helpful in saving time. This new layer, rename it to Textures and set the blending mode to Linear Burn and lower the opacity somewhere around 60%, but there's no need to be precise, we're going to play with it later anyway. Once you have your texture layer, go ahead and create another layer on top. This one is also a clipping mask and you're going to rename this one to Clouds and leave the opacity in the blending mode as is. You're then going to create another layer, this one is also a clipping mask, and this one you're going to rename it to either Texture Plus, if your app is letting you do it, or like something like Texture Extra or Extra Texture, whatever, just so you, you know what I'm talking about later in the tutorial. And this one, the blending mode, we're going to set to Overlay, and we're going to lower the opacity again around 60%, but we're also going to come back to it, so it doesn't matter. You're then going to create another layer, also a clipping mask. By now you should be an expert at clipping masks. <laughs> this one we're going to rename it to Shadow and set the blending mode to Multiply and put the opacity somewhere around 80-90%. We're almost done. Create another layer. This one is also a clipping mask. We're going to rename this one to Light and set the blending mode to Soft Light. Opacity is 100%. And last but not least, we're going to create a new layer that is also a clipping mask, of course. This one we're going to rename to Color, and we can set the blending mode of this one depending on what you like, either on Multiply or Color. I'm going to go for Color. And I'm also going to lower the opacity around 50%, but again, the exact number doesn't really matter, just in that, in that range. And with all our layers set up, we're now ready to start drawing. So go ahead and select your base layer. and. There are so many different brushes that you can use for this. I'm going to be using just a regular inking brush, but honestly you can use whichever brush that you like that has fairly hard edges. So I'm using yeah the um, Studio Inking brush, I guess. Sorry, my Procreate is in French, or at least some brushes are in French, some are in English, it's a bit confusing, but anyway. Um, and then you're going to pick a light bluish gray color. And you're going to draw the silhouette of 
what you want to draw. So if you're following the program and you're on day eight, it's gonna be a circle. If you're on day nine, it's gonna be an object or a sculpture or whatever. And if you're doing your own thing, it's gonna be your own thing. <laughs> so now when you have your base, go ahead and select the texture layer. And you can use so many different brushes. So um, there are a lot of marble brush actually that are created and can be super helpful. Um, in Procreate, for example, the one that I really like is called, well, water. <laughs> and you can see it does a really good job at creating like a marble effect. But if you don't have those fancy brushes, don't worry, you can totally do the marbling yourself. And for that, I recommend an airbrush tool, so like a very soft brush. But if you do have a brush that mimics marble, feel free to just use it all over your shape for the step and then meet us at the next step. So you can just skip right ahead. Otherwise, what we're going to do is very simple. Don't worry, it's not complicated. I know it can be a bit intimidating, um, but it's really, really not a big deal. All you're doing is you're drawing some soft little shapes that um, feel organic. So if you've watched the wood tutorial that was earlier this week, um, so still in this uh, theme material, material theme week, I should say, um, We've kind of been drawing these shapes as well. So we're drawing some sort of flowy lines that resemble um, like the rippling on a body of water. So it kind of makes sense because one of the brushes that I was recommending earlier was the water brush. So you kind of want this rippling effect. And there's no rule, you know, marble is something that occurs in nature. What I mean by that is <laughs> like we have to dig out marble. It's not something that we construct. And so the lines inside of it are not going to be perfect. They're not going to follow a specific pattern. They're just flowing there. So let loose, just draw some flowy lines. And the one thing that's going to make a big difference, as you notice here, is if you use different sizes for your airbrush. So I recommend you start with a fairly big size and very lightly, if you have um, pressure on your, your pencil, very lightly press on your either iPad or tablet or phone or whatever you're using and start sketching some areas that you want your marbling to be in and then lower the size or um, decrease the size, I should say, of your brush and then add in more like thinner lines that start to get darker and build that way. It's going to make it way easier. Another really cool tip is most design software or more um, most digital art software, I should say, have a smudge tool. So usually it is this finger icon that you can see here uh, in the top right of my iPad. So they vary from software to software, but usually it's like a, a pressed finger. And if you use this tool, you can move your color around a little bit. Um, it just kind of blends it in. It's not really a blending tool, but it is in a way. <laughs> and what we're using it for here is just softening some of the lines that we've created. So we do want some lines that are a bit harder, so that have harder edges, but we also want some lines that feel like they're just disappearing in the material itself. So really at the step, just go ahead and back and forth with your paintbrush and your smudge tool and maybe even your eraser. You just want to create this very soft texture that is super flowy, super organic. And the biggest tip I could give you is don't overthink it. Just do it and I promise it's going to look good at the end. Now you may notice one thing about marble is you don't only have very soft little lines like this. We also have some like grittier area. So we're going to create this on the clouds layer now. So once you have your main texture laid out, go ahead and select the cloud layers. Again, I just said that, but I'm going to say it again. Go ahead and select your cloud layer as well as a fairly textured brush. So either a charcoal brush or like a rough inking brush. I'm using the dry ink in Procreate, but seriously, any brush that has some texture to it is going to work just fine and you're gonna create or you're gonna select sorry a like dark bluish gray color if you have the color palette it's the um, bottom color on the far left and you're just going to very quickly scribble over some parts of your marbling so I'm you can see here I'm focusing on the areas where the lines either meet or separate so kind of where you have 
um, two lines connecting or yeah you, you know what I mean <laughs> I'm focusing on, on these areas to scribble over and it's just going to reinforce the texture and make it feel a bit more full and complete if that makes any sense at all so just yeah just sprinkle some scribbles over your marble and you want to make sure that some are fairly small and some are larger areas just to have some variation because again marble is something natural and with your blending tool or your smudge tool i, I should say um, once more you're just going to go over the scribbles so that they don't look like scribbles anymore because <laughs> we're not looking in for this like drawing effect at least that's not what i'm going for um you just want to make sure that it blends in nicely but also you want to retain some of that texture that you had in your brush so try to find a good in between so you don't want to over smudge everything so that it gets super smooth but you also want to lose some of that drawing feeling to it and if you remember this layer we left the opacity and the blending mode to just like 100 percent and normal but you can definitely play with it and see if there's a blending mode that you like um, like color burn looks good I think, multiply looks good, but my favorite, if I remember correctly, is vivid light or hard light, no it is vivid light. I just think like it makes the color pop a little bit more and I like to lower the opacity because otherwise I feel like it's a bit intense, but you can definitely play with the blending modes at all time to see if you like the way the different texture interact together a bit more. Anyway, once you have your clouds, grit, whatever that is <laughs> completed, go ahead and select the texture extra layer. That was a, a mouthful. And um, select a super light bluish gray. Um, basically all we're going to do is add more marbling effect, but this time it's going to be pale. So just to save us time, so this tutorial is not like two hours long, I'm going to use the water brush for this. But if you don't have the water brush or marble brush, just go ahead and use the same technique that we use at first to create the marbling effect uh, that were a bit darker. And at this point, we really have most of the texture down. So feel free to go ahead and play with the opacity of your layers. So especially the textures and the clouds layer, and I mean, even the extra texture layer. Just play with them and see how they interact together. If you lower the opacity of one or if you up the opacity of one, you're going to see that it creates different effects on your marble. So play with that. And once you're happy, we're going to add a little bit of a like shadow and light effect on this uh, sphere in my case because it's looking very, very flat. <laughs> so on your shadow layer, go ahead and select again your soft brush or your like airbrush type of brush as well as your shadow layer, and you're just going to paint over where your shadow would be. And the thing about shadows is they're always located at the opposite of your light source. So in my case, my light source is on the top left, which means my shadow is going to be on the bottom right. So you can see here, since it's a sphere, I'm only drawing some sort of um, like crescent moon shape in the bottom. So if you're on day eight of marble, that's also what you're going to do. If you're on day nine or if you're drawing your own thing, make sure that you really think about um, the implication of your light source and which shadows are being cast. So for example, if there was another sphere that was stacked on top of this one, the top sphere would also cast a shadow on the bottom sphere. So really be mindful of the environment and really pretend that you have some sort of a light source that's gonna really help you create shadows that are more realistic. Speaking of which, if you want to create really cool shadows that are not super basic, especially on objects that have some sort of reflection on it or reflective properties, I mean, marble is not super reflective, but still we're getting in there. Next week we're going to cover metals and there we're going to get a bunch of reflections. But anyway, um, a really cool thing is to erase a little, very tiny, super simple pale line <laughs> on the edges or on the edge of your form. So you can see here, I'm very gently erasing this tiniest line. And it's just, you can still tell there's a shadow, but it helps the piece pop a little bit more and it helps your sphere separate from the background, like if there was a light source that was also from behind. Speaking of light, go ahead and select a very light banana yellow type of color, as well as your light layer, and again, the soft brush, and just add a very soft and simple light on the top. 
So marble, like I was saying earlier, is not super reflective. So you're not going to get a light that is clean cut. You're going to get something that is super, super soft and not super opaque. But you still want to feel like there's light on there because the shadow itself is really cool. It, it helps see the volume, but you also want to have the light. So anyway, again, at this time, now that you have your shadow and light, you can definitely go back and tweak your textures and clouds just to make sure that everything matches well together and at this point we're really into fine tuning details but it makes a big difference and it's super easy so make sure to listen till the end um, in this case we're drawing a sphere that is in just like a gray environment because we're focused on our texture however since marble starts to have some sort of um, reflective property if it was an environment like for example a jungle you would see some of that jungle color appear a little bit on the marble so this color layer is where you do that and it's super easy you take again a soft brush and a color that is reminiscent of the environment in which your marble would be so in my jungle I would have a lot of trees or plants so it would be green and you just kind of gently wrap the sides of your shape and just like as a demo if you can see if I change the hue of this color layer you can feel like the, the marble is in a different environment altogether, even though the background is still this boring gray. So yeah, definitely make sure that if you are drawing an environment, you add this color layer and you can see here, if we change the background, I mean, it looks a bit, it doesn't look super good, but you can see that it helps the sphere just feel more integrated in your piece. Speaking of integration in piece, the last little thing you might want to do is add a drop shadow. So since we have a shadow on our object, um, it means there's a light source. And it also probably means that the object itself would cast a shadow on the ground. So you can see here, I made a mistake when I created a layer. I forgot to change the blending mode. So go ahead and if you have a, a drop shadow layer, set the blending mode to linear burn or multiply. And you can lower the opacity somewhere around um, 80%. And with the same color you use for your shadow on your marble, as well as again, the same soft brush and maybe the eraser to tweak the shape, just go ahead and draw a shadow on the bottom, or at least I should say below your shape. So there you go. This was how to draw a marble texture with and without fancy brushes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And if you want to check out the rest of the digital art course, make sure to go and follow the link that will be in the description below. And if you are doing the entire course according to the schedule, make sure to come back to watch this video on day 9. So day 8 was drawing marble in the shape of a sphere. But day 9 you then use one of the reference pictures that are in... Uh, the description below as well as on the website to draw like an object in context which has a marble texture to it and before you leave don't forget to subscribe because i put out new videos like this one every week especially during the month of january where we're going to cover a total of 13 different textures spread across five teams so make sure not to miss that and i will see you soon